What's up, everybody? This is Mike Manza with another Manza Faust Productions video. And uh, Saturday, I went to a show at Cherry Street Station in Wallingford, Connecticut. And this was huge, man. This is, like, already in the running for what is probably going to be the best show of the year. And why is it the best show of the year? Because you had three legendary fucking bands playing this thing in a row, and I just wanted to come on here and talk about it. Uh, one of these bands, I've seen a shit ton of times, and uh, the other two, it's been a while since I had seen them, and it was just really cool. Saw a lot of people I haven't seen in a minute, and uh, yeah, so we had the show open with a uh, newer band out of Connecticut, I believe. I'm not too familiar with them. I think this is the first time I've seen them. More of a metallic hardcore, like, a little bit of metalcore, a little bit of, like, just heavy beat-down vibes, very, like, late 90s kind of feel to it called No Honor Among Thieves. And they were good, man. It's not t really my typical taste, you know. Some of this more modern metalcore stuff kind of just doesn't do it for me. It all kind of sounds kind of the same, but they had good energy, you know, vocalist was all over the fucking place on the stage. You know, they they had, like, some really heavy breakdowns. The tone of the guitar, real chuggy, really dug this band. And, yeah, like, you know, seemed like a younger band. But, uh, yeah, they were solid dudes, really cool. They hung out during the whole show. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to probably check out more of their stuff in the future. So they opened... And uh, the place was packed, man. I want to say it probably sold out. Real good turnout from uh, everybody there. Uh, packed. And once I got there, it was a shitty day out. It was raining. It was windy. It was just gray as fuck all day. So I didn't want to deal with outside. I don't go outside anymore because I don't smoke anymore. You know, it would usually be in between bands. I would go outside and smoke and, uh, you know, just chill in between bands, but that's not a thing anymore, so I just stuck by the stage all night, I wanted to be as close as I could to the action, and I noticed, like, when I stand on the, uh, I guess it's, like, the right side of the stage, um, because the left side of the stage, if, for most of you who don't know, uh, Wallingford, uh, Cherry Street Station is kind of an old school layout. It, you know, there's a stairway up to the bar, but right as you walk in, there's like the main, like dance floor or whatever you want to call it. There's like a back room behind everything, and uh, the stage is kind of interesting. You got like two pillars in front, and then in between, there's like a little staircase. It's not that tall a stage at all. It's not. It's barely a stage. It's barely off the ground. And, uh, you know, they got the two pillars there, so, like, people will jump up on them and, you know, do their crazy front man shit. Um, so, you know, being up front at the right side is ideal because if you're on the left side, you know, you'll get crowd killed into the fucking women's bathroom. And that's never fun, man. The women's bathroom is literally right there. There's not a lot of division as far as, like, the layout of Cherry Street Station. But I got my spot. I always like to get up by the... There's, like, a little, like, entrance. I like to be, like, right there. And that way, people go and ape shit. I kind of don't get hit that much in that area. And I really didn't get, like, too beat down on until, like, the last couple of bands, which is fine. You know, I go there expecting that sort of thing. But, uh, so the next band coming on, uh, I've heard a bit about these guys, but I didn't really know, like, anything in particular, just that they're a solid, new-school kind of hardcore band. And that was Thought Control, and I believe they're from New Jersey. And Damn, dude, I was blown away by this band. For a band I hadn't heard that just came out, these guys killed it. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to checking out some of their stuff. It's, a, it's like very straightforward, fast, a little bit of late 80s, um, that like 
kind of a little bit of crossover, more in the in the terms of like a crumb suckers, like a darker crumb suckers, maybe a little bit of leeway, but also like just that rage and aggression of stuff like negative approach and Neon Christ and that early thrashier kind of stuff. Um, very like aggressive, maybe even a little bit of like a poison idea, but that might just be me. But their aesthetic was cool. They almost had a bit of like a that band from a few years ago on Youth Attack, City Hunter, that was had that whole giallo, like, stalker, thrasher kind of sack and feel to it. Uh, they had a little bit of that. They had, like, the ski masks and stuff. And I, I saw them come out, and I'm like, what is this, like, mince grind kind of... And, yeah, like I said, they're straight ahead sack and hardcore, but, like, it really worked. It has that darkness. It has that aggression... Um, it's got more of like a throwback feel, a little bit of crossover, like I said, but very much just that fast, straightforward, just punch in the fucking face kind of hardcore. And they were sick, man. Like, I will definitely check them out. Great stage performance. The energy was off the chain. Fucking great. Thought Control from uh, New Jersey. Really pumped on that. And then we get into the legends and they, these are three bands they all date back to like at least the late 80s you know one of them is like one of the original hardcore bands from the early 80s uh that's the last one we'll get to them in a minute but uh first band up i haven't seen these guys in probably like 12 or 13 years a band i used to always catch back at the lng in new london all the time. I think the first show I ever saw there was uh, 100 Demons, Bury Your Dead, and uh, the band I'm about to talk about named Sub-Zero. Now, Sub-Zero is a legendary New York hardcore, very crossover, very metallic, very dark, like, brutal lyricism, you know, very street level, kind of reminds me of like a darker version of Leeway, if that's even possible, just the vocals are a lot more straightforward than, you know, the Leeway style, kind of thrash influence kind of stuff, but like, Lou I've known for like a good 20 years at this point, and that dude is one of the best vocalists in hardcore to this day, and like, just seeing him like, just command an audience. He's doing backflips off the stage and, the, and like crowd surfing, doing like the whole nine, getting everybody into it. The backing band he's got. I don't know how many of these guys are original. A lot of the bands that are backing these like OGs singers are a lot of hired guys, a lot of newer kids and um, guys who have probably been around like New York hardcore for a while, so they kind of just come on. But um, man. Like, they were so on. The music was so intense. You know, you didn't have, like, a lot of movement during, like, Sub-Zero. More of that came from the next two bands. But, like, just, they had such a performance. And, like, it was packed in there. It was hot. It was, like, cramped as shit. But, like, I was up front. I did not stop banging my head and screaming along to every song from these last three bands. I just had the time of my life. And seeing Lou, I hadn't seen that motherfucker in years. I don't even know if he recognized me. Probably not, because, like, who the fuck am I? But, you know, he shook my hand. We're hanging out. He he was just really cool to, like, chat and chill with that dude. Because I hadn't seen him, I don't even think, since, like, this show up in Danbury I went to that he was putting on. He always put on some really great, like shows out in that part of Connecticut and yeah so seeing them after all this time was fucking killer next up we got one of my all time favorite bands to see live and one of my all time favorite fucking bands out of New York out of hardcore period that's uh, Shoe Terror and they never fucking disappoint Polly's still one of the funniest front men in hardcore, and, like, one of the most consistent. His vocal is just amazing. He goes between the harsh, like, 
growls and screams into like a amazingly um, heartbreaking like crooner style that you can really hear later on with stuff like Vision of Disorder, Life of Agony, the more like melodic, almost like proto new metal stuff that was coming out of back in New York in the early 90s. You hear a lot of um, Paul Bearer's like kind of croon, like soulful style of singing on those records, especially with Life of Agony. I mean, that guy's definitely taking a hell, uh, I mean, uh, I forget her name now, but, um, you know, memory but yeah life of agony is just one of the great bands and you can hear her really like channel a great amount of that paul bearer crooner style of singing and like just like they always have a similar set you always kind of know what they're gonna play sometimes it changes around order and stuff but man they open up with like here to stay going into eye spoiler and it never fails to get that place back and move and never fails to send the chills up your spine and get you screaming every fucking word and that's what i was doing i was right up front i was you know moving around as much as i could you know i was getting that adrenaline out and like i just love sheer terror i've seen them so many times and never have they disappointed the only band i'd say really like trumps them as far as a live performance is negative approach and when I saw Negative Approach, Sheer Terror, and I Hate God at the Space a bunch of years ago, like, I hate to say it, but Negative Approach blew both I Hate God and Sheer Terror off the fucking stage. And th these are just three of the greatest bands you can see live. Just nothing to fucking beat them. Uh... So, yeah, Sheer Terror did their usual stuff. Like, Paul Bear is a little, like... Um, stuff in between songs is just on top. He's like almost like a stand up, like Don Rickles style, like hardcore front man. And it's just so much fun. The lyrics are so brutally poignant in that band. You know, the older I get, the more I kind of identify with that kind of like uh, disillusionment and isolation and like kind of heartbreak that you get from a lot of those lyrics. And that's not a common thing in hardcore. You know, hardcore you think of like, we're all friends, we gotta stick together, fight against the system, rah, 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 that kind of shit. Shit tear ain't like that, you know. that They'll have elements of that, I guess, but like it's more just like kind of that disillusionment with hardcore, just like, you know, like this kind of reluctance to be a like, um, kind of figure within all of it but just like it's powerful powerful stuff a lot of heartbreak a lot of a life lived it's definitely the band for just broken like bitter motherfuckers um but the energy of the music it never gets old the band he's got behind him I think he's had the same lineup since 2010 when he reformed, and it's just solid. They kill it. Um, the guitar, the guy on guitar, I don't know who he is. I've seen this band so many times. I don't know who the guitarist is, but he definitely is like an older guy. Probably played in like New York bands back in the day. Uh, Definitely has that style. It looks like he crawled out of, like, CBGBs in the 1970s. But, man, he thrashes. The dude kills it. And Paul, like I said, keeps keeps it up. And just a solid lineup, solid band. Can't go wrong. Uh, there's a couple of songs I would have loved to hear. They didn't do Close My Eyes, which is, this is, like, the first time I've seen them where they didn't do that song. But, hell, they threw in uh, uh, I'm Not Waving, I'm Drowning, and, like, that's one of my favorite fucking songs. And I don't know if they play that as much, but just hearing that, it's a great, like, sing-along for me, because I know, like, every fucking word to this band. Just solid, solid performance. Um, 
even like you know and they got their fair amount of new songs from uh 2014 standing up for falling down and if you want a great modern hardcore record from a legendary band definitely check out standing up for falling down it is like probably one of my top 10 uh new york hardcore records i mean hardcore records from the 2010s because it's just so fucking solid and it feels like Sheer Terror hasn't missed a beat since their stuff in the late 90s. Um, so, yeah, and then the big one at the end of the night. Now, some people had kind of uncrowded the place. Maybe they were outside on the, on the patio area. Maybe they had left. I don't know. It wasn't as cramped, but you still had a fair amount of people there. People were still opening up and, you know, moshing and everything like that. And I was thrilled to see this band. Again, have not seen them in a fucking long time. But I remember the first time I saw these guys was in a barn up in Massachusetts. I believe the fucking town was called Topsville, Massachusetts. This hick town, real in the middle of fucking nowhere, outside of Boston somewhere. And we're, I remember me and my dad driving around. This is way before, like... Um, GPS was a thing that everybody had in their cars, and never mind on their f smartphones like you do now. Like, we had no idea about this place. I had uh, gone to Warp Tour earlier that year, and there was a guy handing out these little flyers, and it was for Suburban Noise Fest. I'm like, this sounds cool. It had this great lineup, Gang Green. You had... Uh, DOA headlining, that was the only time I've ever seen DOA, they blew my fucking mind, uh, the first time I saw DRI, Toxic Narcotic, uh, The Unseen, when they first got, like, Mark on vocals, that was kind of whatever, uh, I liked him at the time, but that shit has not aged well for me personally, um, Dark Buster, first time I ever even heard of them. They were great. Down by Law with fucking Dave Smalley on vocals. You just had an amazing lineup all the way through. And um, one of the bands that stood out for me at that show was none other than Boston Slapshot. And to this day, they're like one of my all-time favorite Boston hardcore bands. Um, Choke is just one of the most, like, intense frontman of all time, and one of the most, like, definitive hardcore frontman, like, prototypical hardcore. There's nothing that beats this dude's vocal. I've definitely bit in a lot of his vocal, like, delivery, the kind of, like, almost, like, it almost reminds me of, like, the, the kind of screams you get out of, like, the comedian Sam Kennison, but in a more Boston kind of, uh, kind of, like, vibe and stuff. And, you know, he's got a, just an instantly recognizable vocal, recognizable delivery. You know, the lyrics, you know, some of them haven't aged well. Some of them are extremely politically incorrect. Um, I get it. It's, like... Definitely confrontational music, but I adore this fucking band. They, and like the hockey image of it is kind of cool. You don't see a lot of like great hockey based hardcore. You got two man advantage and that kind of stuff, which is great. I mean, they're fine, but they more come off as kind of gimmicky. When Slapshot definitely has like a kind of hockey attitude, very Boston like. You know, the Bruins are, like, the fucking mascot band for these guys. And they're great. They they definitely hold on to uh, the the traditions of early Boston hardcore, like SSD Control and DYS, Jerry's Kids, even Gang Green. Just that aggressive, fast, in-your-face, no-fucks-given, um, solid fucking hardcore and I haven't seen them in a bunch of years. The last time I saw them, I think, was in New York when they opened for Sheer Terror. I think it was Sheer Terror's, like, 30th anniversary as a band. They had a big show at a, a Williamsburg Music Hall, which I hated. I hate Williamsburg. It's just nobody fucking mosh. Nobody gave a shit. They all just stood there with their fucking arms crossed. Like, yeah, this is pretty good. 
Like, they don't fucking, you know. I came back that the next week, and I was like, yo, Williamsburg doesn't hang. <laughs> and I know how it is, you know, the yuppies and the fucking hipsters have taken over that part of Brooklyn long before I even was conceived. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not too hell-bent on it. But uh, it was good to see them again after, like, 10 fucking years. They haven't, again, just like Sheer Terror, just like Sub-Zero, haven't missed a fucking beat. Just aggressive and just in your face. Choke is, like, 60. He came out and he just gave this big announcement, oh, I'm 60, like, all this type of shit. And you had, like, Lou from Sheer, uh, from uh, Sub-Zero during his set, like, shouting out how fucking... Choke almost looks like he did in 1987, you know, he hasn't, he has not aged, you know, yeah, you'll see it a bit, there's like a bit of wrinkle in his, like, neck and stuff, but the dude has, like, the most energy I've seen, there was no front man who, like, went as into it as Choke did, and, like, that's so fucking cool to see, that man is a legend, he has been at it since the beginning of Boston Hardcore. He is the face of Boston Hardcore, if you ask me. And, man, they had such a great set, went through so many great hits, you know. Those, like, these cool little intros that they've started doing, like, kind of slow, doomy kind of intros, like, to No Friend of Mine and What's at Stake and these kind of slow, like, down... Um, tempo versions of the riffs in those songs, and then they go right into, like, the more sped up, mid, you know, kind of versions of the songs that we all know, and man, that works so good. It's almost like a intro preview kind of thing, and it was great. And what surprised me about them, I don't know if this is a new thing, they broke out a fucking Gigi Allen cover. They did uh, You Hate Me and I Hate You, like, just killed it, and I had a blast. It, like, it was more during, like, slap shot. I started moving around and dancing and stuff and, and kind of, I didn't get too aggressive. I remember, uh, you know, some people were going back and doing the back and forth thing and moshing and stuff. I was still right up front hanging out with uh, Brian Sawicki, good friend of mine. Shout out, Brian, and... Uh, Johnny from Cry of Havoc, another really good dude, and just screaming my heart out to some great slap shot. And they're just solid. I, I've said it so many times, but just the band he has behind him, I don't know when he got rid of the original guys because it's a lot of, it, again, it's kind of like a young hired group that he's got now, but these kids can fucking play. They're really, really solid. It's always been a really tight sound, and they deliver hands down. They did some newer songs, like off the self-titled album from a few years ago, and they sound really good. They mash together with the rest of their set. Um, the only, the only like kind of nitpick I have is they didn't do any Stars and Stripes, which is. Uh, choke side project more of like a straight ahead oi kind of vibe and i would have loved to hear like them do like shade for battle or whatever other songs they have but you know they had a solid set you got that gg allen cover you can't go fucking wrong it was such a great night the energy was fire the crowd wasn't bad it you know some of the bigger crowds in those tiny little places it can get kind of drama-heavy and stuff. You had an older crowd, too. I don't think anybody was under the age of 30 there. You know, it was a lot of us, like, kind of dudes who would have seen these bands um, at, like, the LNG, like, 10 or 15 years ago, you know, the, who would be, like, going to these shows for so long. And it was great. Got to see uh, John Watterson. Uh, who I haven't seen in years, a lot of great faces, you know, the the usuals, you got Joaquin and Jim Martin and everybody else, and just great crowds, there's always that, like, one or two shows every year where everybody comes out of the fucking word work, and it's like a family reunion, man, it's just so much fun and so cool to see everybody, and there was no fights, no bad vibes, 
people were going fucking ape shit. The just great atmosphere. And it was a solid show. And like I said at the beginning, it'll probably be in my top rankings of show of the year. And hell yeah, it's definitely that first shot in the arm I need for like the year. And there's so many good shows coming up. I, I really want to try to make it out to uh, Black and Blue Bowl this year. The lineup is fantastic. And uh, Madball, uh, Murphy's Law, and Crown of Thorns playing uh, Tompkins Square Park is definitely tempting. I haven't been there for a show since I saw Sheer Terror, Killing Time, and Combust there a bunch of years ago. Um, my my Boss Tones played as well, but I got out of there because the place was just packed and I'm not really a ska guy. And yeah, so... Real great show. Can't say enough. And, uh, yeah, definitely a good start to the year ahead of shows. So, yeah, that's about it. If you want to find me on social media, I am the Hordes of Manzerfaust on Instagram. And uh, I'll probably come out with another uh, edition of the Sample This series I dropped on Monday. It seems to be doing real good. I got a couple of uh, records I did not show in that video, so I want to pull those and go into detail about them because I think there's like so much good shit out there to cover. And yeah, that'll about do it. So this is Mike Manzer with another Manzer Faust Productions video. Stay fucking metal.